In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to create stickers in Adobe Illustrator. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to another episode of Wine and Design because I post every Wednesday and Sunday. My Wednesday episodes are all about sipping on your favorite beverage, which for me is occasionally a glass of wine and talking about graphic design because I love to share with you guys my real life experiences when running a graphic design business and the things I go through, the things I learn. So thank you so much if you're new. I'm very excited that you are here. It's gonna be super fun to show you guys behind the scenes of how to create stickers on Adobe Illustrator you can see these stickers right here that I created um, I think it was like a year ago now have a little bit of a different style to them so this one is cut to the shape and this one has like an outlining to the letters so both of these are important when it comes to telling your printing company how exactly you want them printed which I will leave the directions I told my printing company when it came to these two right here on the screen but that's one of the important parts when it comes to stickers is the printing process. So making sure that you find a printing company that you like and has good reviews and stuff is very important because you don't want to waste money on a sticker that's printed wrong. And actually this printing company did print these ones wrong in the beginning. They printed them on a sheet like this, which is fine, but I really like when stickers are cut to the shape just like this one. So. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to create these and I hope you guys enjoy it and you find some interest in this. Um, super fun. But with that said, let's hop on over to my screen. Okay, you guys, I just opened Illustrator and I brought in two drawings I created a while back on Procreate. I know I was going to show you guys how I did the wine and design sticker and the other one, but since I already have those printed, I kind of wanted to do some brand new stickers and potentially get these ones printed as new ones. Um, but yeah, so these are drawings I created in Procreate. I can always do a separate video showing you how I do that. But as you can see, these are just PNG images. They're not actually vectorized yet. So to vectorize them, which is important to do to create these stickers, what I'm going to do is click on it and open up Image Trace. So let me grab that real quick. Okay, so once I have image trace open, I'm gonna zoom into the artwork a little bit so we can see exactly what it looks like when it traces it. Um, what I'm going to wanna select on the image trace is something more like, since there's some colors in it with his eyes, I think I'm going to do more of a 16 colors type of vibe over here. So I'm gonna click on six colors and we will see exactly what it comes up with and if it's accurate or if it's a little off or anything, we can always change it, but sometimes it takes a minute as well to do the tracing portion. Okay, so as you can see, his eyes are not green. That's just because the colors are a little bit lower. So if I increase the colors to, let's say 20, it should bring in all the colors that I want to show. So now the colors are in there and I think I'm just going to play around a little bit with the the noise, the past, the corners, all of that. So I'm going to increase the noise and see what happens since there's a lot of like details in the original photo. We'll see what that kind of looks like. And this is why it's important when you're drawing your stickers on Procreate, if you decide to do it that way, that you're paying attention to the brush brushes you're using and stuff like that to make it easier to vectorize into a sticker. Just something to keep in mind. Like I didn't originally make this for a sticker, but the brush I used had a lot of like airiness to it, which is what's causing some of these areas to look a little bit messier, which I actually kind of like that look. Okay cool so that kind of just like changed this a little bit so I'm actually going to increase the path so we'll see what happens there I usually pick one area to look at like I'm gonna look at this area specifically to see how the tracing affects it
Okay, so once you remove the background, you can kind of see the areas that maybe need to be deleted. Um, but I'm going to go over to expand in the properties, which I'll show you right here. Expand in the properties will allow this image to stand out from the background. There we go. I'm going to close those. Now I'm going to zoom into these areas that need a little bit of help. And we're just going to delete those white areas. And I think I'm just going to delete that whole gray area. Because even though my cat Leo has some white and gray hairs, they aren't that crazy. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm also going to delete my initials since I don't really need that on the logo. And there we go. So that is now a vectorized vectorized image. You can either use the font you wrote with the image if you want to, or you can even like add in a font and delete this part. But I am going to use this. I kind of like the organic look of it. And I just grouped those fonts together. Actually, I need to group the whole image together like that. And for some reason, it's not going. Hold on. There we go. Oops. Actually, yeah, let's group the whole image together. There we go. And then I'm actually going to duplicate this entire layer so that we have another one. And I'm going to open up our Pathfinder tool. So once you have the Pathfinder open, you're going to want to select Unite, which will fill in the entire layer with one simple color. Now this color right here is what's going to be the outline of your sticker. So I'm actually going to do white because I think that might look really cool. So let's do white and Leo knows we're creating this of him. He's crying right now if you hear him. I'm going to open up properties again so that we can increase the stroke. Oh wait, actually, let me delete the, delete that part. We're actually going to go up to object, path, offset path, and that's going to allow us to have an outline around this entire image here. And don't worry, I'll fix these sharp lines. I'll show you how to do that. We'll do round right there. Perfect. And I think 20 should be enough. Let's try 22, that should be good. And then we'll go okay. And then you're gonna just align that with your image. And now I do need properties open again so I can align these. Align, align, and we'll want the white underneath. And there we go. It's looking like a legit sticker, which is awesome. Um, there are some areas right here where there's like a hole in the white. So I'm actually going to open up the let's open up window appearance okay i might need to open up offset path again okay creating another offset path but as long as we get that area where the white was showing right in here um it should be good to go is it okay Okay, awesome. So there is our first sticker. It looks really cute. And I actually really want to get this printed now because I would love to use Leo as a sticker on my phone or something because he's a little cutie. Um, oh yeah, also make sure that you always group these together. So I'm going to drag that over a little. It's getting in my way. Um, so I'm going to select it all, right click, group. And there we go. There's your full sticker, and then you can increase, decrease, and it's always going to stay the same size. So there's our first sticker. Now I'm quickly going to create this one and show you how that one comes out as well. Thank you. 
Okay guys, these are the two cute little stickers I created for the purposes of this video, but honestly I do think I'm gonna get them printed because they're just so cute. Um, let me open up the screen all the way. But in order to basically get the artboard perfectly around this, what I'm gonna do is click on the artboard here, open up properties, and I'm going to select on the fit to selected art. So that's just gonna put the artboard right around that art, which is perfect. And then when exporting, I usually go to export and I would say you can do export for screens or save for web. I like to do save for web, that way I can really increase that percentage and get it like high quality. I'm gonna increase it all the way to 800 so it's super clear. And actually let's decrease it a bit to 500 or 400. There we go. And then I always like to do PNG, art optimized, unless it's a very text heavy sticker. And I'm gonna save it. iCloud Drive, Leo, sticker. Perfect. And then I'll show you guys what that looks like as a PNG. There it is, it's so cute. Honestly, I really love this. I would love to get it printed, it's so cute. Um, but that's how you create stickers. It's super easy, super simple. It just really comes into, I guess, I would say the harder part is creating the drawings itself. Um, but once you have those drawings, creating the vector of the drawing and doing the pathfinder, offset path, all that is pretty simple. But let me know if you guys try this out and if that helped. Um, yeah, I want to create more now. So fun. All right, you guys, I hope that you go and get some fun stickers for your branding. It's one of the best ways to really represent your branding because you can put it on like your water bottle, on your laptop, somewhere where people are going to see it. I've even put it on my phone cover as a really fun little touch to that. And if you have your branding on there, most likely people are going to ask you what exactly that's about, especially if it's a really cool looking sticker. Like I have had this one on my water bottle and I've gotten asked about my wine and design series, which proves to you that it catches people's eyes and it's just a really fun way to represent your brand. So I hope you guys end up implementing that in your own world, in your own branding. Now, I also wanted to mention before I sign off that Black Friday is only 16 days away on November 25th, which is just coming sooner than I can believe it. But I'm going to be offering all of my courses for a big percentage off. I haven't announced the exact percentage off yet, but stay tuned on my Instagram and my email list, which are both linked down below because I'll be posting there probably sooner than here as soon as the sale goes live and when I have more details rolling in about it. So definitely make sure you're part of those so you know when those come in because I'm gonna be having huge, huge sales. And I really don't do that very often. I feel like Black Friday is that one time a year where I really just wanna offer it to anyone that wants in on the courses. I have a branding course, a website design course, a course on how to get clients. And I'm also going to be offering access to my community. If you decide you don't really want a course yet, but you really want in on some of the things we're talking about, you wanna ask questions, you wanna be part of a group of amazing creatives that will really support you in your journey, my community will be available to enroll for a very, very small price. So definitely stay tuned for all of that. There's gonna be lots of fun things happening within the next couple weeks and I'd love for you guys to be a part of it. Uh, but thank you so, so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions on this video or on the courses that will be on sale down below or DM me or email me, whatever you want. I'm happy to have a conversation. But thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.